In this lesson, we're going to learn about multiplying mixed numbers. You probably know all about multiplying fractions by now. If we have 3 fourths times 2 fifths, we just multiply the numerators together, which is 3 times 2, which is 6. And we multiply the denominators together, which is 4 times 5, which is 20. And 6 twentieths is equal to 3 tenths. You also might be familiar with the common factors approach, where we know that 4 is equal to 2 times 2, so we can go ahead and cancel out one of those 2's there, in both the numerator and denominator, and 3 times 1 is 3, and 2 times 5 is 10. Where we do that simplification right there, using that common factors approach. Now I have two mixed numbers to go ahead and multiply. In order to multiply these mixed numbers together, what I end up doing is I end up writing improper fractions for each of these mixed numbers. Three holes, three and three holes is worth how many eighths is that first question that I asked myself. Each hole is worth eight eighths, so three holes is worth three times eight eighths. And we remember to add in our five. For two and one half, each of those holes is worth two halves. So two holes is worth four halves. Four halves put together with that other half, and that's what this looks like. That's why it's four plus one halves. Again, three and five eighths is equivalent to, let's see, 21, 26 eighths. And in this case, we're multiplying, let me fix the sign there, sorry about that, times 4 plus 1, which is 5 halves. I use that common factor approach. I see a 2 here. That can go ahead and be 2 times 13. So I'll write it out and then cross out one of the 2's. And at that point, since 13 is prime, 5 is prime, um, and 8 is not divisible by 13 or 5, I know that I am done. 13 times 5 with my common factor approach, that is. 13 times 5, there's a couple more steps still, is 65 and 65 eighths. That final step being, we need to go ahead and write that back in simplest form. Simplest form in this case is just going to be a mixed number. 8 goes into 65, 8 whole times, with the remainder of 1. And that's why it's 8 and 1 eighth. Again, we read this here as 65 divided by 8. And if I could divide that remainder of 1, I would have divided it into 8 parts. That denominator stays the same when you're converting to a mixed number. Here's another problem. 2 and 1 third times 1 and 2 fourths. Again, I'm going to look at each of those mixed numbers, and I'll look at that first one first, and think how I write it as an improper fraction. 2 and 1 third. Alright, 2 and 1 third. Alright, it, each hole is worth three-thirds, so that two holes is worth six-thirds. Putting it together with one-third, I get seven-thirds. This one hole here is worth four-fourths, so putting it together with two-fourths, I get six-fourths. And remember, I'm multiplying. Using a common factors approach, I see three here. I know that six is two times three. So I can cross out one of the threes here, put a one. I see a two here, and I know that four can be written as two times two, so I can cross one of those out there as well. One times two is two, and seven times one is seven. So two and a third times one and two fourths is seven halves, and seven halves, much easier to simplify than that previous one there, seven divided by two, goes in there three whole times, with the remainder of one. Seven halves is equal to three and one half. Here I have another one, and this one here is for you to try. Please go ahead and copy down the problem. Hit pause. Please remember to simplify. All right, here's our solution. 1 and 5 ninths, we have to write that as an improper fraction. 
Did you write 14 ninths as your improper fraction? For 1 and 1 twelfth, did you write 13 twelfths as your improper fraction? Now using a common factors approach, 12 is written as the product of 2 times 6. 14 is written as the product of 2 times 7. 2, 2. In the numerator, I'm left with 7 times 13, which is 91. If you needed to write that out, you could have written it out for yourself. And in the denominator, I have 9 times 6, which is 54. All right, 54 goes into 91 one whole time. And what's remaining? It'd be the answer for 91 minus 54. which, as you see here, is 37. 37 what? 50 fourths. 37 being a prime number, this is in simplest form. So, revealing, we have 5 and 2 fifths times 3 and 1 tenth. And what do we have to do with each of those mixed numbers? We have to do what with each of those mixed numbers? Right, we have to write them as improper fractions. What's the denominator going to be for 5 and 2 fifths? What's the denominator of the improper fraction going to be? 5, right, because we're talking about fifths. This 5 holes right here, 5 holes is worth how many fifths? 5 holes is worth how many fifths? Right, 25. And what do we have to do with that 2 again? Right, we add it. To get what? How many fifths? 27 fifths. So 5 and 2 fifths is equal to 27 fifths. We still have one more fraction to work with, though. We have 3 and 1 tenth, that mixed number to work with. 3 and 1 tenth, each of those holes is worth 10 tenths, so 3 holes is worth how many tenths? 3 holes is worth how many tenths? 3 holes is worth 3 times 10 tenths. And then we do have to add in that 1 still. And remember, we're talking about tenths. 3 times 10 is 30, plus 1 is 31. I'm just going to go ahead and erase and go ahead and put a 1 right there. 31 tenths. At this point, I can go ahead and look for some common factors. I know that 31 is a prime number, so I'm not going to look for any factors for that there. I know that 10, the factors of 10, are 1, 2, 5, and 10. And at that point, I'm looking at this, and I don't see anything there. Well, because 27 is 1, 3, 9, and 27. It's not divisible by 2, 5, or 10. So we're just going to have to multiply this out. Our denominator is going to be 50, which is 5 times 10, and our numerator is 27 times 31. 27, 0. 3 times 7 is 21, 1, regroup the 2, 3 times 2 is 6, plus 2 is 8, and then so I add those two together to get 837, 837 fiftieths, which equals, let's see, 837 fiftieths, 837, and I'm going to use partial quotients, that'll be easier for us to see, if I just take out 10 right away, 10 times 50 is 500. 837 minus 500 is 337. Oh, I can take out 6. 6 times 50 is 300. And 337 minus 300 is 37. Add those two together, my partial quotients together, that is, and I have 16 with the remainder of 37. So 50 goes into 837 16 whole times with the remainder of 37. So that's 37 fiftieths.